We like simple truths, or rather we like simple stories. Therefore we like lies. We're in a freaking dystopian novel where you can't work, can't make any money, all, all the criminals are gonna be let out of jail, and you can't buy a gun. If it is what it's supposed to be, we're not prepared. We don't have masks, bro. We don't even we don't even make our own antibiotics. Why is there no food? And why are people buying all this stuff? Like what is what is that all about? Well, we're learning what it's like to be an empire in decline without a central national identity. We're not bound together by any kind of shared culture, by any kind of shared religion, by any kind of even shared worldview anymore. And that's a joke, bro. This is a complete farce that we're living through right now. All right, welcome back to Slightly Offensive with your favorite host, me, Elijah Schaefer. Today's topic is incredible. We have dishonesty all around the country, both in the media and with the politicians. And right now we're in a pandemic and we just don't know what is going on and what's truth and what's lies. My guest today is Mike Cernovich, who is the author of the book Gorilla Mindset, as well as a visionary filmmaker of the uh, documentary Hoaxed. He is here on the show today to discuss this important topic. So Mike, welcome to the show. It's always a pleasure. I've been waiting a long time to do this. Yeah, and I've been trying to get you uh, in here for a while, and because of the pandemic, you're not traveling, I'm not traveling, so this actually is kind of a blessing we got to have you here. And if you guys don't know about Mike, uh, check the uh, links in the description, of course, to find out everything that he does and to find his social media. Anyway, uh, we're going to jump into the topic. So our topics today, we're going to be talking about the media um, and what's more dangerous. Is, is it really them? Is the virus itself as dangerous as what people are saying? Um, or is the real enemy in the room actually the economic meltdown that's coming. But first, please make sure that you realize that this version on YouTube is always a shortened version of the podcast. It's much fuller and longer on blazetv.com. Uh, and you can use the code Elijah below with the link to get $10 off a year subscription. But if you don't want to watch the video version and you just want the whole thing anyways, we offer the whole version free audio only on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever else podcasts are available. So go ahead and give us a five-star rating and download that always so you can get the full version for free audio only. Anyway, uh, let's jump right into this. So there is a lot of lies out there, and I, I don't really think that you have to talk about all the lies up front to recognize the truth. I think the more that you know what the truth is, the easier it becomes to recognize a lie. And you, you are a master at this. You've uh, even made a whole movie called Hoax about the dishonest media, the way that they uh, mislead people. And so getting to before we get into the details, kind of a, a big question I've had is if we're going to talk about the truth, does the truth even exist right now in our culture and in the media? Or, or is there just, I guess, experiential truth? So my truth, your truth. Yeah, my answer diverts a little bit from what people consider conservative orthodoxy. I believe there are two truths. One is absolute divine truth, truth from God, truth from nature, truth from whatever you want to call it. And here's what I mean by that. If you jump off a roof, there's a truth to that. There's a thing that's going to happen and you're going to die. But a lot of truth is socially agreed upon or socially constructed. So for example, is is it the right speed limit to go 55 miles an hour or 75 miles an hour? And we so we agree to all these truths or even though there's it's not an absolute objective truth. So some things can be objectively true and other truths are sort of socially constructed and there's a lot of wiggle room. And the reason I bring that up is because there's a line going around right now, which is a lie, and they're saying you can't put a value on human life. And the answer to that is, well, that's sure is absolutely a lie. There's something called actuarial tables. If you apply for life insurance, they're going to say, okay, well, how old are you? How much do you make? Here's how much you get when you die. It sounds morbid, but that's really the way the world is based. We don't drive around in a bubble at three miles an hour to prevent everyone from dying in a car crash. So it's an absolute lie when politicians say, you can't put a price on human life, uh, you can. You might not like it. It might make you uncomfortable <laughs> to say that you can. Right. But it's the truth is that we do put a value on human life every single day and in every single industry and in every single OSHA regulation. You want to save as many workers as you can, but not at the expense of shutting <clears throat> down all production. You don't want to have car accidents, but people have to get to and fro. We do. So that's what I mean by... That's just a lie that we don't put um, value in human life. Okay, that, you know, and bringing to that then, because because the truth is hard to understand then, and because sometimes it's hard to swallow. Um, for the viewers, you know, th because there's so much misinformation, I want to get your thought and your mind on this. And for people that don't know who you are, or they don't even care, which is fine. Um, and for those that do know, 
uh, would realize that you've been on the coronavirus topic since before most people. In fact, I think, were you the first or one of the first people calling for a travel ban on China? Yeah, I think Pasobic was a day early, maybe. Bannon was, I think, a day early. But the generally January 22nd to 24th was the range where a few people were saying, you know, we got to be in, got to be in travel. And so Pasobic. So whenever you do these things, I always think it's kind of interesting how people are perceived a certain way. And I understand why people might not like me. You know, I've, I've said some rude things and I continue to say rude things and that's fine. But Pasobic's a, a Mandarin Chinese speaker, and he, you know, so he was talking about it. I was talking about it. Bannon was talking about it. But that was pretty much it, dude. Three people and then a couple of venture capitalists. And that was it on Twitter. And then suddenly the narrative shifts to where Vox yesterday deleted a tweet because it had tweeted out January 31st that coronavirus would not be a pandemic. And they had to delete that because obviously that's wrong. So speaking of lies and duplicity, we now have the left-wing media saying Fox News killed people. They lied about coronavirus. And I'm here like, uh, no, they didn't. There were a few people on the, the so-called right, like me and others, talking about it. And then weeks later, the media shifted its narrative a little bit. And then about a week later, Fox did. So the liberal media was maybe at best a week ahead of Fox. Although Tucker Carlson, who's conservative media, Fox News, He's the one who was on it early also, and he went to Mar-a-Lago and told Trump, hey, you better take this seriously. So the, the truth is messy, I guess, is the way I always try to explain to people whenever I think about an issue is the truth is messy because we like simple truths, or rather we like simple stories. Therefore, we like lies. A simple story is liberal media, we were right, conservative media is wrong. That's what they want to say. What we want to say is the liberals were wrong about this, and this shows that Trump was right all along, and that's just not true. The truth is that if a few people, who, kind of early Trump adopters, and Vanity Fair did actually a great article, surprisingly, it was a really good article on this, were on it, and then conservatives, I call them the flu crew, they were saying it's just the flu, the flu crew we call them, and then the liberals kind of came around a little bit, and then the liberal media kind of came around. And then about a week later, everyone was on the same page, so to speak. Yeah, because I, I actually probably was a little more on the flu crew ahead, like ahead of time, because when I saw you calling this stuff out pretty uh, relentlessly, I, I know that you always have a hunch about things, but I'm not one to just jump on somebody because I follow them about another topic. And I'm going, what are these guys talking about? Why are they raising such an alarm about this? And even now to this day, it, it, this is my question. Uh, I'm going to go through a few of these with you. Um, I read like a, so so many definitive statements about where this virus came from, but you were on this early. Plus, you're friends with Jack Posobiec, who, of course, has a major background intel everything with China. Um, he lived there, from my understanding, was mm -hmm. for a while as well. Did the did the virus come from bats, or did it come from a lab? Like bats. Okay, so I'm glad you brought that up, and because again, the truth is messy, and the truth is deliberative, and the truth is nuanced, and that's why I'm really glad you framed it that way. It's like, what is truth? And truth is messy. Um, it's deliberative and it's nuanced. And by that, I mean, we don't know where we know it came from Wuhan. We don't know where it came from. We don't know if it came from a bat. We don't we know we don't, the bat soup stuff. Is, it's just we don't we want to go there. What I think happens and this is a hypothesis, I don't have proof. What I think happened is that there is a major lab in Wuhan. And if you go back, you can read these articles from Nature magazine and other standard fair scientific journals in 2018. So I think that they were doing experiments and they were using bats, among other things, but their workers weren't, weren't being paid well. So when you dispose of a bat or something like that, that has value as an exotic animal. So I think it was employee theft. That's why if you said, how do you think this got out? I don't think China unleashed it as a bioweapon. I don't think people were eating soup. I think that based on what we know about the world and human behavior and human incentives, somebody who was underpaid, said, oh, we have this bat, doesn't really know what's in it, know what, they're, what they're doing, and then they take it to one of those wet markets or something to sell it as an exotic trinket. That, I don't, but I don't know that that's true. That's what I believe is probably true. You don't think it could have been a, a, a botched vaccine? There, I mean, that, but that doesn't explain how it gets out. So it could have been... But wasn't there links, wasn't there already leaked SARS, wasn't there like issues of things getting leaked from that very lab in the year, or are those unconfirmed? Those, those are unconfirmed, yeah. A lot of that got spun out. The best, the best available, the be, so the thing is, how do you find truth? The truth is that whatever's being said today, we don't look at just today, we look at years ago. So if you go back years ago, you find reports about 
a lot of concerns, actually, from articles in 2017, 2018 about this laboratory in Wuhan and how they might not be doing best practices in terms of containing what they're researching. So sure, they could have been researching a vaccine. That, that's, they could, what, what they were doing in there, whether they were researching a bioweapon, a vaccine, we don't know. But the question is sort of how it got out. And the answer is most likely employee theft. Okay. Well, then this is this is a good question. Then, since you were early on this, I saw you've been critical a bit how the government has handled this. Do you think that Trump and the way that the administ his administration overall and local municipalities like California have handled this situation appropriately, or are they overblowing it, or are they underhandling it? You know. Okay. So let's take a quick step back. Why were a few people, like Bannon, Poso, me, a couple of VCs, Belange was one of them. Why were they worried about this early on? And I think we got to start there before we go on to anything else. And this is how people have a better understanding of the world is does anybody listening? And this is what I, how I would try to explain to people. Is there anybody listening on this podcast? And by the way, if you're listening, leave a rating or review. These things really help in the long run. So if there, is there anybody listening or watching who thinks, you know what, China, they really value human life. And they're going to shut down their country, <laughs> right? It's absurd to say, just it's on like, the face. Yeah, I don't think that's a real sentence. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's literally an absurd question to say. <laughs> and then you say, well, okay, so you agree that they have no value for human life or they value it quite low. They're going to shut down their entire country, their entire economy to save a few lives because it's just the flu, right? So China freaked out. It's a centrally controlled government. They shut down their country. And that tells you, if you understand Chinese culture, you, this is crazy. And then what tipped me off to Wuhan virus was not what I was reading on the internet. It was a friend of mine was launching a new new product, new business. He did a million dollars in pre-sales, maybe 1.2 million. Killing it. You could just tell, yeah, time to launch. And I said, hey, bro, how's your, how's your thing going? He goes, oh, this was back in like December, early mm -hmm. January. I said, hey, bro, how's your thing going? Oh, can't do it. I go, what do you mean you can't do it? He goes, we're just waiting for another three months. What are you talking about? Oh, China shut down. China shut down. You're hearing these things, and they're just not really registering, right? It's like the stages of grief, right, denial. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, what do you mean they're shutting down? He said, oh, yeah, there's this thing, Wuhan virus. It shut down the whole country. Nobody can go to work. Everything's shut down. Mm -hmm. And then I started to look into it more. And I think that's also, too, what tipped off people like uh, Balaji and I think Naval Ravenkow was on it big as – they're, they're venture capitalists. They do a lot of funding with startups, and they have a lot of supply chains with China. So they're probably hearing – because I heard about it from the business side. I didn't hear about it from some like vague general side. So I bet you they also heard about it from their founders who were saying, oh, we can't get our developers doing things. Or things are sh shutting down in China. And then that's what tricked people's interest. Yeah, you know, and that's that is a very interesting thing because it's like if you knew that China didn't value life, you saw them shutting down. It gives you a hint. They knew something was wrong. They knew something was bad early on. But it seems like this is what kind of throws me off, though. Uh, you know, California and Los Angeles specifically doing these major shutdowns. Why are states like California putting these things into place and other states are because not? Because they're petty tyrants. California, they tried to take, they tried to shut down gun stores yesterday. L.A. Mayor said, "This is unbelievable, but it's all true." You won't see Blue Check talking about it, though. You won't see the Verifies talking about it. Yesterday, L.A. County said, we're going to go to every gun store and shut it down because they're, quote, unquote, non-essential business. And then Garcetti also said that they're going to shut off your water and power if they determine you're a non-essential business. Can you imagine that? You have alarm systems. You just you have sprinklers. You have, no, they're going to shut it all down. Can we go to Beverly Hills, Rodeo Drive, non-essential businesses, and the alarms are going to be turned off? Let's go get some Rolexes, right? This is going to lead to looting. And they're taking away your right to buy a gun by shutting down gun stores. So they, he tried to anyway. Garcetti yesterday was going to send the LA County sheriffs to shut down every gun store because it had been declared non-essential. Luckily, there was a lawyer in there in the office who said, you can't do this. This is just so unconstitutional and so unlawful, you can't do it. But that's all that stopped him, or otherwise they would have closed down every gun shop. How in the world are we getting there? But that's what a lot of these mayors are doing is they're using this as an opportunity to play out their power fantasies. Right. Cause yeah, that, that's what always threw me off about this is that this is where I want to know who's, who's more dangerous. Is it the virus, the, the media, or is it basically the way the government's handling this in the economic fall? Because when I see in California, specifically in Los Angeles, we've been in a state of emergency for a long time. I mean, we've had plenty of new diseases develop. We've had plenty of outbreaks. We have a massive homeless population, which is a hotbed for pretty much a major pandemic disaster, even locally, hyper-locally to, to be exact. 
But it's like, and now this pandemic comes. I think we saw, our, was there our first death yesterday in Los Angeles? Or was it today? Yeah, give or take. There was a playwright, a n- number of people. There have been a few high-profile deaths, although the question is, how many homeless people are there in California? 40,000 to 100,000? Yeah, I read, I read a stat the other day said it was like 107,000 in okay, California. Okay, how come they don't have coronavirus and they're not all dropping dead? Right? I, I was an early warner, and I was told if we don't do all these things, then... Millions of people are going to go to the hospital. It's going to overload our hospital system. we got to flatten the curve. This, the contagion's like nothing we've ever seen. The fatality rate is 10 to 20 times the rate of the flu. Okay, I'm on it. I'm on it. But they're not practicing social distancing in Skid Row, which is now not even Skid Row anymore. It's like blocks and blocks and yeah. blocks. Skid so, City. Yeah, Skid City. Why don't they all have coronavirus? Why aren't they all dying? Why aren't they all in the hospital? Where, where are the body, right? I'm just like, show me the bodies. I'm not seeing them. And that doesn't mean that they won't happen, but it does mean that rather than, this is what I mean, rather than, hey, I'm going to use this to shut down gun stores because I'm going to play out my little power fantasy. AOC wants to open up Rikers Island. I, I'm, I'm, we're in a freaking dystopian novel where you can't work, you can't make any money, all, all the criminals are going to be let out of jail, and you can't buy a gun because of gun shops. Oh, and your power and electricity might be shut off, too, if you're declared non-essential. What it, that's more dangerous to me than the coronavirus is the statism. We know how many people, this is again back to truth, we know how many people die under totalitarianism. We have the Holocaust, we have the Cambodian Genocide, we have the Armenian Genocide, we have Pol Pot Straight Leap Forward, we have the Gulags and the Soviet, we know, we're not guessing. We're not saying, oh, well, maybe a few hundred thousand people have died under totalitarianism. No, it'll be millions or tens of millions, so we already know that too. And that's why as we're deciding what to do about coronavirus, we can't do that in a vacuum and act like that's the only thing happening right now. So then if you had to answer, like, just to, guns pointed to your head, who's, who's at fault here? Is the virus the most dangerous? Is it the media? Or is it yet to come because of the shutdown of the economy? It's our entire fault. This was, we don't have enough ventilators, we don't have enough masks. We learned a lot of things that we didn't know. The way I'm looking at coronavirus right now is that unless the numbers change, we got a, what's called like a stress test. So if you're about to release a new product, you go, what happens if 100,000 people come to our website? Does it crash? You always want to see what's the worst case scenario. If coronavirus isn't what it was supposed to be, we should thank God because if it is what it's supposed to be, we're not prepared. We don't have masks, bro. We don't even, we don't even make our own antibiotics. 97% of our antibiotics come from China. When I read that, I was like, that can't be right. Somebody told me 81% of our antibiotics come from China. I said, that can't, that's absurd, right? That's absurd. No, no, it's actually like in the 90s. Are yeah, I, I linked to this great political article about that. The percentages of it will blow your mind. Forty percent of our hydrocortisone. Just the number of you wouldn't. The numbers are staggering. So this should be hopefully hope to God. I mean, hope to God. We just did a fire drill, a real time fire drill where we really thought the world was on fire, and here's what we found out. Our supply chains are broken. We're not prepared for any kind of shock. There was a lot of shenanigans going on with Wall Street mm-hmm. and stock buybacks and Boeing and other companies weren't capitalized. And We go through and fix all those problems and patch it up because we won't be prepared for a real pandemic. That's for sure. You know, I also realized that the people, like I, I was actually super disappointed in the American people for the way that I thought of Americans looking out for each other and the way people were buying toilet paper. Where, where the hell did that start? Like, why did people start panic buying products? Why is there no meat on the shelves? Why? I mean, really, why is there why is there no food? And why are people buying all this stuff? Like, what is what is that all about? Well, we're learning what it's like to be an empire in decline without a central national identity. People want to draw these analogies Damn. to World War II. And we're not a World War II America anymore. America is a place that you move to to make a lot of money, and that's what it's seen as. And that's what we are, just economic units webbed together. We're not bound together by any kind of shared culture, by any kind of shared religion, by any kind of even shared worldview anymore. We're all tied together as little economic units, and everything is about how much money people can make and how much that they can take from other people. 
And I think that was like systemically put in place. I mean, that's been going on for decades. They've been undermining the core values of what America is. And that's, I mean, that's what I like to fight against too. A lot of that is because you realize people don't even know what it means to be a part of this country. And so when I'm watching people fight over a roll of toilet paper, when I'm seeing lines for three hours outside of Costco, three hours, like I think you made a point about this too. It's like, I didn't realize how fragile our country was to collapse until I realized, imagine if just one store, Costco, went out of business. Like, do you know how many people are freaking out and dependent on this one store to get supplies during this time? They're one of the only stores I've seen who's been able to stock pr appropriately too. And it's like, if, if just Costco, one store, one industry, not even an industry, it's like, it's just one business went out that would already cause mass chaos and hysteria in the country. And it's like, that's how fragile we've become as people. It's like, I, I couldn't find toilet paper for 10 days. I had to wait out. I had to go to four different stores and wait in a line outside just to get one small pack of toilet paper from my home. And it's like, you know, gosh, with the food we eat out here, Mexican food and all this stuff, it's like, believe me, everybody needs more than one small pack of toilet paper in a, over a couple of weeks. And I'm watching as people are like arguing, people are freaking out, people have masks on. And I'm going, where the hell do I live? This isn't the, the, the country I learned about in my history books. This isn't the country that I learned, you know, hear politicians speaking about. These are a bunch of confused, uh, radical people who have no idea what the hell's going on. They are not listening to anybody. And they're, it's, all, it's a free for all. Yeah, that's welcome to. Quite frankly, the way people act, I, I think, is frankly a joke. Complete and total joke. The way people panicked, the way people weren't prepared, the way people aren't looking out for each other in the way that you might expect, the way people loaded up this bailout bill that is most likely going to be passed by the time this airs. Four billion Nadler wants for museums in New York. Just things that you're like absurd. That are absurd. You wouldn't really believe it. Isn't that twenty five? Is that true? There's twenty five million in provisions yes. for supplies and, and and wage increases and stuff for Congress. Yeah, Congress. This might change, but as of right now, unless enough people scream, then yeah, twenty five million for Congress for you know slush fund for them to have. Mnuchin's getting you know who knows how much, but now they're so called an advisory board, but their meetings aren't public, so they're exempt from Sunshine Act laws. They're exempt from Freedom of Information. And that's a joke, bro. This is a complete farce that we're living through right now. And I'm glad that people, a lot, I think a lot of people are waking up. We, we now know they will take your guns. This is not a talking point to freak people out. This is not a talking point to panic people. Garcetti tried by shutting down the gun stores, right? That's step one. You think they wouldn't go door to door and take your guns off? They could get away with it. You think they tested? You think they te they were testing their reach to oh, see how sure. far they could get with people? Oh, are you, yeah, absolutely. They're, how much can they get get rid of? In what world do you tell the sheriffs don't arrest criminals, close down gun shops, right? It's a because backwards world. Yeah, there's all these guidelines coming out now for how to deal with coronavirus and, and crime. Because obviously, if there's a rapist or a murderer, you're going to arrest them, whatever the risks are. But for larceny and stuff, the police won't even take these calls. So if you went down to the local store and took out 500 bucks of stuff, police aren't even going to answer it because they're not going to risk getting coronavirus. Oh, but they will risk coronavirus to shut down gun stores. That's interesting, right? It, it, it says it all, bro. AO, it says it all. And again, I hate saying it because coronavirus should unify us. AOC wants to open up the jails while they want to ban guns. Tell me. If that isn't some Joker level shit, I mean, re okay. Realistically, I think when I'm watching the way people are responding to this, I'm number one shocked with people that I knew that I thought were less government, uh, free thinking kind of people just bow down to totalitarianism in the country so quickly. I'm also really shocked too um, at people like I got a I got a call. This is a new thing. I got a call from Adam Schiff because uh, I'm still registered in his district, and so I got this this voice town hall, right. um, and I just listening to him basically saying. I'm the government. Trust me. We have information. You're the people. You can't, you can't handle the information. You need to trust us as we move along with this. And then they had these, uh, you know, obviously pre-screened, pre-approved call-ins of people mm -hmm. always starting it out with like, Adam Schiff, I'm such a big fan. You're a hero for the country. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Adam Schiff is it. This guy, while this coronavirus is breaking out, was still pushing the impeachment sham. This guy's done nothing for his district. It's falling apart in front of you. These people are captivated. The government, I, I'm, you're I'm shocked. You're paying for that. And by the way, you're paying for that. And that <laughs> $25 million, Yeah, he's not paying for that out of pocket. That's official government fund so that twenty five million that they're gonna get is for more of that propaganda. Yeah, it's I'm older than I was. If I were your age, a little bit older even, I would be furious. I'd be fuming. 
I'm just maybe too jaded or cynical now. I'm just sort of, you're just, you're watching this. Like, I can't believe that fascism that we were warned about is here. But it isn't from the orange man. It's from Adam Schiff and Garcetti and AOC. There's just no way in the world, there's no way in the world you say, we're going to not let you buy a gun and we're going to open the jails without saying you want people to die. There's just no other way to put it. There's no other way to characterize what they're trying to do. They're trying to get people murdered. There's absolutely no question about it. So also the laws are in the favor of the looters because we have, I, I, what, I don't know what SB law it was. Do you know what that is? That Yeah, it's unbelievable. You can watch. There's dystopian living right in front of us now. There's videos coming out of Santa Monica and other parts of SF. I think that if it's under $800, and it, the, give or take, under $800, you can just go into 7-Eleven and fill up your bags, and the police aren't going to come. They're not going to do anything. Did you see that video from San Francisco yeah. of the people just taking the drugs out of the drugstore? Yeah, and they, they just went to Walgreens. stood and, there and yeah, just watched them? Yeah, nothing you can do. And if the employee intervened, the employee would get fired. The police aren't going to answer your call. And you can't have a gun. Welcome to the new America. And this is why, why would they engineer it like this? Because this is what I want to bring up. Um, let's talk about Chloroquine Gate, you know, this great, uh, this great uh, fish tank cleaner right. story. So uh, for those that aren't familiar with it, um, you know, Trump, Dr. Is, 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 is you pronounce it Fauci? How do you say it? Fauci? I'm, Everyone terrible, says it differently. I'm terrible with pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but the doctor, right? You even have the attorney general or whatever. And they're all saying, hey, we think chloroquine, uh, zithromycin, whatever, this thing, hydroxychloroquine, this could end up helping people who have coronavirus. And they go, you know, this is anti-malaria drug. Boom. Some guy goes out. He apparently buys fish tank cleaner, essentially, ingests it, and dies. And one of the active ingredients is, chlor is chloroquine. Mm -hmm. um, so he's just a moron. He's an idiot. Um, I don't even know if the story is true, but this is what's being alleged. He died. Then immediately, uh, a journalist comes on and says, oh, by the way, the story comes out. And, it, and it's trending. Number one on Twitter. It's the top story. Man dies from chloroquine, the drug that yeah. is supposed to help uh, fight coronavirus. So the media isn't helping at all in this. They've come in. And they took a story of a moron who just ate fish tank cleaner and they've twisted it into a fear mongering bait story and with working with the tech companies to make to push it to the top to get the American people to not only think the coronavirus is going to end our country, but that there's no cure and that the only treatment they've heard about is actually a, a, a ploy from the American government because it's going to kill them. Why the hell are they doing this? What, what happened here? Like, what is this a sign of that our media is so actively working against the people in this situation? Because to be honest to me, it scares me more than the virus itself. Yeah, you guys can decide whether, whether to chop this out or not, but my, my better angels and other angels are fighting right now to... You call that the, the boomer version of the Tide Pod Challenge. So I don't, <laughs> somebody dies, so I don't want to like joke about people dying or whatever. But I thought that was interesting when I saw that. And that's immediately what, what came to mind was uh, their version of it. And yeah, what happened, I followed the case since inception. It's, it's in a way, and that's why I, I hate to joke about such matters. But here we are. The couple that, you know, they just weren't particularly intelligent people. And they, they didn't even have coronavirus. They had like a sniffle. They'd be like, oh, okay, so we better get this fish It was as a medicine that you would put in a fish tank to help fish. So what, what some people have been doing is you can get antibacterials, you can get antifungals from a pet store, and they've been raiding it, but then they bought this exotic medication, not even using it as you're supposed to. The guy died, the husband dies, the reporter interviews a woman, and she says, well, we just listen to Trump, and whatever you do, don't listen to Trump. And I'm like, okay, so she is politicizing this. It's, like, I'm very sad that, like, they died, D whether you're dumb or not. And it sounded like a painful death. It was a very sad thing. But then she flips it right on Trump. I never looked at her voter registration record, but I was a little bit curious about that. And th so then the media goes from, hey, the story should be don't eat Tide Pods, Tide Pods, right? That should be the story. Hey, don't take fish food, uh, or rather, don't take fish tank cleaner. Don't take fish medications. Don't do that. That should be the story. That's what, what the media would be doing if they were acting in the public interest. Hey, we know a lot of you, maybe you're reading on message boards. You shouldn't, you shouldn't do this. Don't listen. No, no, no. The story became this guy died because they listened to Trump. Don't listen to Trump. It's garbage. Not gar I mean, we're running out of words to call things because that isn't garbage. It's evil. <laughs> no, it is truly I evil. Right, well, because you can't, you can't even articulate it anymore. Because when I saw this story, I go, 
if this wasn't evidence that this entire time we can't trust the way the media has been handling this, I think it was Trump who specifically said what we were least prepared for was the media. Um, now, I don't know. Sometimes Trump does tend to fib a little bit or try to, to pass the blame in a lot of situations. So I'm not, I'm not saying that he doesn't play any fault for trying to downplay it as well publicly with people. But I will say, like, with watching this story and seeing, like, what scares me the most is what Twitter deems to be fake news in, in the real world and what they demote. And to see that this story, Twitter, who's supposed to be now fighting against fake news, who will mark you know, a meme as being dishonest now that Trump shares or misleading, thought this story was credible enough to allow it to sit in a place where it reached, I think the one original tweet got 13.6 thousand retweets in its first day. Yeah, the audio interview with the woman did 1.5 million views last <sighs> I heard. Right, and that brings me back to when people go, oh, don't you know Trump lies? And I said, well, first of all, I'm a lawyer, so we call it, uh, he has a counterfactual understanding of the situation. So I would not say necessarily Trump's a liar, but he's often quite counterfactual. But then I tell people, kidding aside, yes, because to win as a Republican, you have to be a reprobate liar. Mitt Romney, they call them a Nazi. They said he killed his dog. There's this, all this coverage that you can go back on. And Mitt, because I don't know what happened to his soul, because he tried to be kind of honest at the time, now he's a, he's a complete liar, he would be like, no, 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 I didn't actually like kill my dog. And like, oh, so you're, did you kill your dog? No, I didn't. So now people are like, oh, he killed his dog? That's like, wow, terrible thing. And no, no, I didn't actually do this. So you have to play all this defense. Meanwhile, Democrats can get away with anything. So the only way to combat the media, Trump was a symptom of the media. He wasn't the cause of it. The only way you could win if you're Republican is you had to be as dishonest as the media is. Because this is, again, this woman was not following Trump's advice when she took this medication. And the, the subtle ways that they manipulate the narrative is if you look at the thumbnail images on all the articles, it shows the prescription medication. But if you actually buy the, the fish stuff, it'd come in a jug or a different kind of bottle. So they're trying to make it look like, oh, they were taking the real medication. Here's what happened. It's bad. Which, by the way, is harmful because now when people go in to their doctor... And their doctor says, oh, we have this experimental thing that's been helping a lot of people. They're like, oh, my God, but I don't want to die like those people in Arizona did, right? So th they're actually going to cause people to die because now everybody's been like, oh, that, this must be a terrible drug cocktail. I don't want to end up like that, that couple did. When really the truth is they were using fish medication, fish tank cleaner. Th that, that's the lie. And that, so that's why when they tell me, oh, Trump lies, I don't care. I absolutely don't care. If he supposedly lies every day, doesn't matter because media lies too. And if you're if you're in a dishonest game, you have to play by the rules of the game. And if the rules are dishonest. That means you have to adjust accordingly. Okay. So then, that speaking of the media being dishonest, you know, we're seeing the media now. They're beginning to mirror. Uh, Chinese propaganda. The CCP party is, is very active yeah. right now on Twitter. They have a lot of bots. They've even written under my post, like, you are a sham. You, I don't believe this guy. And they're stupid enough to even write it in Mandarin or whatever. They don't even take time, or Cantonese, whatever it is. They don't take time to, to, to actually speak to me in, in my own language. But they're super active. And what's weird is a lot of the ideas we're hearing about the U.S. military starting the virus, about maybe it was started in Italy. Uh, CNN, particularly, is being notorious for mirroring these exact ideas. Why is the media... Uh, picking up on this influence? Is it because of actual financial investment in the companies or is it because they're just idiots? Okay, it's a great question. Why is the media doing Chinese propaganda? Well, we have a precedent for this. They propaganda for Stalinist of Russia, right? The media has always done propaganda for communist and totalitarian regimes. It would be dishonest of us to have a worldview that expected more from them. They're, but a less cynical view of it is that as Wesley Yang, who's, I think he's kind of a lefty, but he writes about identity politics from the Asian perspective and some of the problems and perils of identity politics. China learned that if you appropriate woke culture, that's how you get the media to do the propaganda. And here's what I mean by that. We all know racism is bad. You know, you can't say, oh, I'm not going to go to the Thai food restaurant because the flu, the coronavirus ended up from Wuhan, right? We, we just know that that's a bad chain of not even just the morality of it. That's just a, a cognitive breakdown. So what they learned is that call it racist to identify where the virus came from because the left wants to go after anybody who's not woke enough or whatever. So I think there's as much of the Chinese regime realize that if you want to get your propaganda in U.S. media – you smuggle it in through those woke talking points. So now we can't call it the Wuhan coronavirus. 
even though if you go back to January and February, that was what everyone was calling it, because if you call it that as racist, and China doesn't want us calling it, because China doesn't want to be blamed for it, China wants to blame the U.S. military for it, so it's quite clever, it's an elegant move on the part of the Chinese government. It's like AJ+, Plus, right? The Al Jazeera right. Uh, woke narrative. I've noticed that when foreign governments try to influence our culture, they use far-left radical ideas to, to uh, sow like a dystopian unappreciation for the country. Like, you know, your country's racist, it's vindictive, they're controlling, and they, they, they bring this in through these really odd and bizarre ways, through pushing uh, disabled rights and things that sound good on the on the outside, right? Women's rights by, by pushing liberty and freedoms for all people and gay people. But in the end, it's just anti-American rhetoric. Sure, some Russia gate trivia that didn't get reported much because it goes against the narrative that Russia helped Trump was Michael Moore actually attended an event put together by one of those Russian propaganda pages. And the idea with foreign propaganda, you just want the country divided. You find a wedge issue. So that's why you had Russia doing propaganda on Trump, Russia doing propaganda on the what they they sponsored Black Lives Matters events, Michael Moore's going to event. Anything that can get people fighting over issues is good for a foreign regime. And that's why AJ Plus, Al Jazeera, right? Just the idea that these people at AJ Plus can lecture of any of us is to me astounding. But ninety nine percent of people who see the AJ Plus logo don't go, Oh, that's Al Jazeera. Oh wait, Al Jazeera is by the Qatari government. Oh wait, there's actually more slaves in Qatar than there are free people. People are dying, putting together all of these buildings, and human trafficking is huge there. They don't even make that connection. That's how clever the propaganda is. Yeah, and it, it blows my mind, and that's why I want to bring up and I know this is going to maybe be a little bit dated by the time this airs, but um, you know, with all the lies, with all of the truth that we we can't seem to pinpoint, I want to know we have to go to what's actually happening now. And I know as of right now, Donald Trump has said that we should try to open the country back up by Easter. Is this enough? And what are your predictions for the country in the next, I'd say, through December? I mean, where does this go? Well, I don't know where it goes because today the GOP and Trump decided to give massive bailouts to Boeing and Wall Street. And the, the conservative media talking point is, oh, no, it's not a bailout. It's this. Just I lived through this in 2008, 2009. I just have no patience for the lies. And I thought Trump would be the one guy who would never do it. Meanwhile, regular people, you, you, you're told you can't go to work, you can't run a business, you can't make money. Oh, and maybe you get 1200 bucks. Maybe. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. It's like means tested. So the, the way it was, and again, this might change, but the, this still shows the problem is I think if you made under 79000 you get it. If you made over 79000 you don't get it. But what if you have your job today? making 79000 and you made 100000 but you lost your job. Who should actually get the money, right? That's how dumb it is. That's how dumb the country we live in is. There's no other way to put it. We live in a dumb country. We live in dumb times. We live in clown world. Well, and this is what I got confused with, too. They go, they're trying to help people. And I already immediately saw flaws in it. I go, okay, so you're taking 2018 returns uh, for single people. But what if they've gotten married in 2019? Uh, there's a lot of people who've got, gotten married. What if someone's a stay-at-home wife and, and she doesn't file a return and you just got married in 2019? And this is a lot of people in America. Now you're not getting the right amount of money. My point being exactly, what if you make less money now than you did? What if you make a ton of money now than, than, you, than you did? 1200 what if you live in a state where 1200 is a lot of money? You live in California where 1200 is not even 50% of your monthly apartment rent. It's like, what the hell's going on? Who are these people? And to me, this is what I've, I've realized. I got kind of scared. I saw an article, and this is, a, this is your opinion on this. It said that this is a sign that populism is dying uh, in the United States because while, while everyone's saying Bernie Sanders is too extreme for America, we're watching a Bernie Sanders-esque policy be put into place right before our ver very eyes while the DNC and the RNC are busy actually telling everyone that he's dangerous for the country. But Trump, the populist man, is implementing basically socialism. I mean, that's, it really is. The, the way I view it is that it isn't a sign that populism has died. It's actually a sign that populism is getting stronger, but we don't have our candidates. We don't have people to run. What's your choice? Like, let's just say you're a Trump supporter, and you look at what the deal is. There's no way you can defend it, right? That, that's, there's just no way you can defend it. You can say he's our guy. I still like him. I like that he gave us Gorsuch. There's a thousand reasons that you can still support Trump after today. Thousand and one, but you can't defend this thing today. You just you can't. 
So let's say you're mad at Trump. What do you do? Vote for Biden, who went on a couple shows <laughs> yesterday, and then they had to cancel another appearance? He can't even speak. Yeah, he can't even speak. You can't even come out. Okay. Bernie talks a big game. Where's Bernie at? Bernie's nowhere, hiding, like a little cuck. That's where he is right now, right? Got cucked by the DNC in 2016, getting cucked now, wouldn't fight to win, let him watch everyone attack Tulsi, who lost her role in the DNC when she defended him when he was getting cucked in 2015-16. Where was he for all that? He's pathetic. He's a coward. So what's the answer? <laughs> the answer is populism is growing as a, a sentiment in America, as a mood as a vibe, as a movement, but we don't have anybody. We don't have anybody in the Senate. Holly kind of is one every now and then, but he's too well put together for me to really trust. He looks too much like Gavin Newsom, right? If you're a populist figure, you need to be a little bit more rough and tumble, right? You don't look like you go get you know, get a manicure and stuff like that. So it isn't. So the populism is growing. It will grow after today, but without a slate of candidates, there's not much that you can do right now. So then what's your advice? Um, and I kind of want to wrap it up with this. You know, you wrote a, a book called Gorilla Mindset and you have, I mean, you even this, like your products, this Gorilla Mind Rush. Um, I know myself, people always make fun of me that I have meth mouth, but it actually is from Adderall abuse uh, as a teenager. I, I used to take Adderall all the time. And when I got off, my mouth never stopped moving. Wow. Um, I don't take Adderall today, but it did. It never stopped moving. In fact, I even have short-term memory loss from one of the uh, sleeping pills he used to gave, give me. It's a class action lawsuit. So I don't always trust like all of those pills and stuff. And I know that you, um, besides offering all, like supplements and alternatives like this on your website, you also understand that you know you you write a book too because it's you can't fix everything by just taking stuff. You also got to change change your mind. And you really, uh, it's a great book, and you really do help people to understand, especially men. I mean, women too, but I know a lot of men are attracted to this. And so that being said, because I believe men are the leaders of the country, I think there's many great women out there too. Uh, but let's start with this. What is your advice? To, to men in this country moving forward because we can't trust the politicians, we can't trust the media. By God, I don't even know if we can trust scientists at this point. It feels like they're, it doesn't, they sound political. What, what, do, what can men do moving forward regardless of if they lost their job or not? How do we build this country back up? Well, th that's a great question and the answer is in a way multifaceted. If you're a single man, what you can do is just stop being a little f***ing cowardly bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so afraid. What do you, you have kids? No. I'm afraid. What are you afraid of? <laughs> right? I mean, really? Like, if you don't have kids, you don't have some of your support. What are you afraid of? Oh, my God. I might. Da, da, da. Okay, then get a tent. Go camp in Alaska. You know, what the hell is wrong with some of you people? So a lot of it is, quite frankly, just bitch-ass mindset that a lot of people have. If you're a dad and you got five kids and you're the sole provider and you're a little nervous, then my approach is a little bit different to someone in that. So I always tailor my advice to people in a different kind of situation. Sort of like if you tell me, you know, if you told me that, oh, you know, my kid has cancer, I'm not going to be like, man, the fuck up and be tough about it. I'm like, well, this is terrible. You know, we, we would counsel through that in a different way. But these guys who are in like the early 20s freaking out, I'm like, what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to plead bankruptcy maybe, which you probably won't even do that because – you didn't take on enough risk in your life. So if you're a young man, you should be taking on more risk. N now is legacy shit for... If you're a young man right now, because I, I work with some young clients, this is legacy shit. Because chaos is opportunity if you're mobile. Chaos is terrible if you have a stable family, a stable home life. It's terrible for you. Because when things change, bad things could possibly happen. Maybe good things too, but it's not good. Stability is what makes a society work. But if you're a young man, opportunity everywhere, everywhere that you look. People, like, I, I even told this to some of the guys. I go, you know, if a lot of older people die, housing will go down. You'll probably get jobs you couldn't get. You know, that doesn't mean that's a good thing to die, but it just means that if you're a young man and you're freaking out, you need to just f***ing harden up, dude. Harden the f*** up. Or, and this is why in Grill Mindset, we focus on just knowing things. So if I told a guy, and he's listening, and he's 25, and he's like, I'm freaking out. And I said, well, I mean, do you have a wife? No. Do you have kids? No. Are you going to die if you don't get – no. Okay, so what's the worst that's going to happen? Oh, yeah, I might lose my job. And Okay, so you might not have much money for a couple months, maybe three months, until you figure things out. Yeah, yeah. So so much of mindset is you just lay out because – 
panic and fear and despair are paralyzing emotions. And you're like, oh my, you focus on the problem rather than the solution. But when you lay it all out, just in a very kind of logical guy, most guys are like, yeah, what am I even afraid of? Or if I said, you know, if anything, why aren't you taking more risk? Why didn't you already start a business and maybe it's going to go bankrupt? Whatever, you fall bankrupt. I know so many multimillionaires pled bankruptcy. Steve Jobs even did a video that I thought was great where he was younger and he said, go do your startup when you're young, when you don't have any obligations. If you go broke, whoop de shit, then just work a real job. But you'll never be, you'll never be, uh, you know, there's a great book I just read recently, The Alchemist, right? And the, uh, there's a lot of theory or rather theses of the book, but one of them is that people are afraid to chase their dream because then when they're older, they can always say, I could have had that dream if I had wanted it. But when you really go after it, that's when you feel the pain, the heartache of losing it. But that's what you have to do right now is you have to chase your dream, especially if you're, you know, the people here listening to this are going to be younger. Same is true for women, quite frankly. It isn't as if women today who are younger can't do anything that a man can't do, right? Just they can. They can do whatever they want. Like I tell my daughter, people go, how do you raise your daughter? I'm like, well, <laughs> same way that I'd raise a son, really. But if you're older or if you're a single mom or you have kids or something, then you know, the advice would be a little bit more compassionate, a little bit less rough around the edges. But for the the 90 percent of your demographic, quit being f***ing pussies and just get it. <laughs> you heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mike Cernovich, uh, filmmaker of Hoaxed. You can stream it pretty much. It's like everywhere now, right? Everywhere, dude. And it's, it's doing well. I've seen it's you got a lot it. of reviews. No, no, it's killing it, actually. I was a little worried because we did... Vimeo only in January, the distribution company that was supposed to put it everywhere else went out of business without telling us. So I wouldn't have even cared if they took our money, but they didn't tell us, so they took our time. So I was really worried about re-releasing it, but it turned out it is doing great, almost doing as well as opening week, so we're pretty hyped. Yeah, it's, it's actually more relevant than ever. Um, so make sure you check the links in the description below for places, or you can just look it up. It's hoaxed. It's spelled like it sounds the normal word. Also, his book is Gorilla Mindset, which I'm sure you'll will have uh, links on the wherever you're watching this, or even if you're listening, there should be links in the description to where you can check out uh, his work. Also, just to let you know, he's uh, extremely relevant on Twitter. Uh, a lot of up-to-date uh, news, stories, breaking understanding ideas, all this kind of stuff that you want to know about culture, politics, and sometimes even might even offend you because he doesn't uh, exactly choose uh, a political candidate or somebody to back for the rest of his life. He takes people based on their merit, and he tends to um, do something crazy that people don't do anymore where he's allowed to change his mind on people and things um, if they change the way that they're approaching something. And so you'll get the very honest and upfront uh, approach to culture and politics. Check him out on Twitter. Also, on, he's on uh, Instagram, Facebook too. Yes? Are you off Facebook? No, I'm still... I They, they shadow me on my page so much. It's a joke, but I'm, I'm around. It's like YouTube. Our YouTube got hit so badly too. It's like, it really is frustrating. I can't get into what, what some of the things we're doing, but luckily we have a good legal team and people and things. And so I know that, uh, it, well, this is a really funny story. That I'm on, I want to I wanna end on this comment. So I wrote a really funny tweet uh, that is dystopian. And I said, isn't it crazy how like you don't, you don't watch the mainstream media news. You went to YouTube to flee it, but then they force it down your throat. Therefore, uh, basically forcing you into these ideas that you've been trying to escape. So YouTube actually responds to me and goes, oh, actually, we're not doing that. Uh, these recommended things and blah, blah, blah are just based off of what's popular and people choose that maybe follow you. And then I wrote back, I said, well, actually, your CEO wrote an open letter that said that what I said is true and genuinely said they just changed their algorithms a year ago to push up these authoritative sources, which are mostly just liberal outlets that you guys um, that you guys have sanctioned. And the third row of the carousel of everyone's homepage now is actually COVID-19 news mm -hmm. uh, with just the people that you want people to listen from and you suppressed everybody else. And then YouTube responds back like, oh yeah, okay, well that's true. Then if you don't want to listen to people, then just uh, block them. And I'm like, yeah, actually I've blocked CNN like up to 11 times now and they keep coming back into my main front page. I can't get rid of this carousel that, that keeps showing up. So it made me laugh. They're like, actually, we're not doing this. Um, and I go, well, but you are. And they go, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are uh, definitely just manually tweaking information to engineer society. And you do know that, but um, F, F off. It's basically what they told me. Well, and that, that <laughs> touches on the theme of the podcast today, the conversation we had, which is they just fucking lie. 
That's what I mean. I'm just getting pissed off. It's like, you know, you're just you're fucking lying. I can go look and say, oh, that clip in CNN has 50,000 views. And I can go see that clip from Tim Pool has 250,000 views. Don't fucking tell me which one is more popular. And that's what I'm feeling with just like a lot of people is you can only lie to people so much, man. You can only get away with so much. We all know that people spin. We all know that people have like a different perspective. And well, is it really this? Is it really that? There's room. There's room, right? There's room to disagree reasonably. What these tech companies doing in YouTube especially is they're just lying. And what, what will that lead to? I don't know, but I don't think it leads to a good place. And I worry a lot about that. But maybe that's a conversation for another day. That probably is. We'll probably have you back on the show. Anyway, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to these videos always to keep independent media and journalism alive. Also, make sure you go to blazetv.com as well always and sign up uh, to get the full version of this podcast. And if you are watching the full version of this podcast and you made the right decision and you signed up to support us and everything that we do as well, make sure you support Mike. Have a great rest of the week. As always, stay safe, wash your hands, and may God bless the United States of America. I'm signing out.